Hello everyone, happy you could be here. Let's dive in. Sit at my grave, season three, Eagle's Death, chapter 17. The stumble back into his room was forgotten. He didn't even know how he made it in. His vision had came back, but he was seeing double. His head throbbed intensely, like he had a migraine. He held one hand gingerly against his face, feeling his blood stick against his palm. His hazy gaze darted around the room. He couldn't think. He knew he needed to help himself, but he couldn't focus. The blood wasn't coming out in gushes, so he could only hope it was just a cut. It wasn't anything worse, but that didn't stop the heat crawling up his body, through his neck, closing his throat, causing his chest to painfully expand and release at too quick a pace for him to keep up. He blanked out and just began doing his best to wrap himself up and clean the blood off in the bathroom. Everything was done with shaky hands. He was in a fight with his body, stifling the jolting trembles that wrecked through him in waves. This was the best outcome. Friendly wasn't hurt, Arden wasn't hurt, and Easton got to relieve some stress. Even with all his worrying, he never thought it would be him that bared the brunt of lines crossed. He kept telling himself he was glad. If it had to happen eventually like he feared, he was glad it was him, but his body didn't agree. Arden walked back into his yard from just a little ways down the road. After he journaled a bit, he decided to take another walk although he knew better than to walk too far away from the house. He was still upset about his day and decided he was finally ready to go inside, so he carefully tried the door and was pleasantly surprised it was still open. He walked in and seeing a few things moved around, the TV still on, volume turned up, but thought nothing of it. He walked his way into the kitchen, washing his hands before grabbing a small snack of trail mix. The house seemed quiet besides the TV. He hoped Reed hadn't left anywhere. If he was done with homework, he could tell him to take him out somewhere. Dad, Arden called. He paused for a moment, not getting a response. He shrugged, figuring he was in his room. Maybe he and Rin Lee both went out somewhere together. Arden made a beeline straight for Reed's room after dropping off his backpack. He finished off his snack by the time he got there. Reed, I'm home. Are you done with homework? He asked at the door. He didn't normally knock and went right on in. But he decided to ask this time, but he figured, even if he wasn't done, he could, and most likely would, take a break for him. No, I'm busy. Reed's slightly muffled voice came through. Arden opened the door, walking on in, a frown gracing his features. The words danced together like a vivid dream. He could feel the emotion from the past and present congeal into his brain, stabbing through to his heart. Every harsh detail was disgusting and clear. The TV wasn't the only loud noise. The stains in the carpet he callously stepped over weren't from a meal they'd shared earlier. Mom hadn't left for a friendly visit. Dad wasn't only taking a nap, and his brother hadn't just been rude that day. Even with this knowledge, he lay there frozen, watching the events play, wishing he'd said something different. Begging his past self to be more pathetic, but it was no use. His objections didn't matter. His screams to stop history fell on deaf ears. Reed, I had to come home early, Arden began, the disappointment showing clearly in his soft tone. Although he was close with his dad and he loved his mother, Reed was the one who held most of his secrets, the one he trusted and wanted to imitate most. The party, it was, ugh, it was terrible, Arden groaned fully prepared to spill his woes. <sighs> I'm busy, Arden. Get out, he replied. He did his best to hide the damaged side of his face discreetly from Arden. His body was still rattled. He was gently trembling all over despite his efforts. He figured it was hardly noticeable unless he was hugged up against someone as Arden hadn't commented on it. <sighs> I should have never went. I thought they wanted me there this time. All they did was laugh at me. I even knocked over the cake. Arden continued explaining. Just talking over it gave him a pit in the stomach, so it was brought back there in his head. Didn't you hear me? I can't help right now, Artie. 
Reed spoke up again, trying to muster in his voice to sound stern. Arden tilted his head, an eyebrow cocking up. Homework can wait. I want you to take me out somewhere. <sighs> Even Gallon stayed with them. I don't get it. What am I doing wrong? Arden continued on, starting to walk close to Reed. Hearing him approach, Reed tensed up. No, it can't wait. I told you I'm busy, so just get out. Reed yelled. Arnold stopped in his tracks, eyes bucking in shock. What's wrong with you? I just told you everyone's horrible to me at that party. Even the parents, they're all making fun of me. Arnold continued whining. He was surprised Reed yelled at him like that. He truly believed maybe he just didn't get the severity of the situation. How could the one person in the world he wanted to talk to be acting like this? Well, I can't do anything about it. Leave me alone, Reed said harshly. He grabbed his feeling pain throbbed to his head as he continued trying to keep his full face from Arden's view, faking like he was just paying attention to other things. Arden paused for a moment, the words sinking in. But you always do something about it. You're just supposed to help me, Arden said softly. Reed didn't respond. Reed, Reed, come on, Arden whined again. He soon hardened his face when he still didn't get a response, starting to feel embarrassed and upset all over again. But somehow, this felt worse. Arden still hadn't left the room like Reed asked, and the pressure of everything was getting to him. You know, Dad's been saying you have an attitude problem. Guess he's right, Arden spoke up. He didn't like the fact that he didn't stick up for himself more at the party. But he wasn't going to let it continue here. He was going to say his comment and leave it at that. Maybe come back later where Reed could be more helpful. Reed paused his fake rummaging for a moment. Shut up, Arden! He shouted. You shut up! You're just supposed to be helping me! You're not even really doing homework! Arden yelled back. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I told you to leave my room and you won't leave! I'll talk to you later, but not now! Reed demanded. You're being a jerk! I'm glad I broke your stupid shades now, Arden scoffed. He tossed them to the floor, stepping on them, cracking the other lens out. What? You broke... I don't care, Arden. Just leave. Quit whining me about that stupid party and everything else. Reed growled. The pain in his head was aching, but the pressure of trying to regulate his breath felt overpowering. I don't whine, Arden huffed. All those people are being mean and stupid, just like you are, Arden shouted. He glanced around the room, feeling the anger and embarrassment build up. He had went in there in attempts to lean on his brother after being humiliated. Now he was turning into one of the bullies. He was shocked and hurt. The small thud, Arden kicked at Reed's guitar that had been leaning in the corner of the room, knocking it down. You do whine. You whine to me about everything. I help you with everything. I've been up at night when you were sick or scared more times than either of our parents have. Reed yelled at him. So, that's your job, Arden said. He could feel his face getting red. He was getting more upset by the second. He felt called out and embarrassed, but he was tired of being the joke for everyone else. It's, it's not my job. I'm not your parent. I'm your brother. And stop breaking my stuff, Arden. Get out. You're always whining about everything. I can't force other people to like you. Maybe work on being more likable yourself. Reed spat nastily. Arden flinched backwards. He felt like he had been punched in the gut. Uh, Ar Artie, Reed began, briefly calming down, seeing the look in his brother's eyes. I know you aren't my parent. I wish you weren't my brother. I'd rather have no one to talk to for the rest of my life than be around you. Arden spat. Reed stayed silent, besides trying to gently catch his breath. He was sorry. His shoulders had slumped. He never wanted to hurt Arden. It was his fault for getting so mad. And at least I don't have to work on Mom and Dad both liking me. You've been doing it for years. Arden mocked. Reed stayed silent. Dad says you put a burden on the family. I think so too. We talk about you all the time. And Mom only likes you when you're working, he continued. Arne didn't know how much of what he was saying was the truth or not, but fabricating what he did know seemed to work. He could tell Reed was getting upset. He felt satisfied being able to transfer what he was feeling onto his brother. 
Reach suddenly grabbed one of his school books, throwing it at Artie. He hardly gave it enough strength to hit him, and his aim was off with his blurt vision. Artem's eyes bugged out. I I'm telling Dad, he suddenly announced. He quickly bolted out of the door, starting to call for Easton. Stop! Artem, wait! Reek had a cold pit in his stomach as he staggered after Artem. Dad! Artem called again. By the way Reek was chasing him, he definitely knew he was home now. Reek heard pounding in his ears as he staggered after Artem to catch up with him. It was hard to focus, but he had to stop him. While running, he staggered again, tripping on the carpet. Dad! Arden called again. Arden, stop, please! Reed pleaded. He suddenly felt a wave of sweltering nausea rush through him. No, you're gonna be in trouble! Arden snarked back, going straight for Easton and Renly's bedroom.